What's going on nation? I'm Scott from MuscularStrength.com and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the number one mistake holding back your back growth. But before we get started, be sure to click that notification bell so you never miss a new video upload from me. Alright guys, so the reason why this video topic came up is because I'm noticing that a lot of you are having a hard time re-engaging your back now that I'm teaching you to work with the stretch, okay? And for those of you guys who haven't been keeping up with my skinny guys slash hard gainer series, I'll post a link to those videos down in my pinned comment below. But basically in those workouts we work with the stretch flex overload technique where we do one exercise that really focuses hard on the stretching portion of the movement to work a muscle, then we go to an exercise that focuses more on the flex, and then we move on to our last exercise which overloads the muscle with as much weight as possible after it's been pre-exhausted from the stretch and the flex. If that doesn't make sense, go back and watch those videos, and it will. But getting back to here, the number one mistake happening is that a lot of you guys when using the stretch method don't know how to re-engage your back muscles so that your biceps don't take over the movement. Now obviously if you've been seeing some bicep gains, which is always a good thing, <laughs> That's not bad, but if the goal is to get a bigger back, then we want to make sure that when we're doing our back workouts that that is the primary focus. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys on a few different exercises how to properly re-engage your back after sitting in the stretch, okay? So the first one is going to be a lat pull down. You know, obviously with the lat pull down, the form is very simple. All you're trying to do is pull this down to the top of your chest. And for most of you, when you get into the stretched position like this, you immediately just kind of pull it right back down like that to get it to the top of your chest, and then go back to the top of the movement and complete your reps. But what's happening is that after you get into this stretched position and you feel those lats being pulled really tight, you kind of just pull it straight down like this with your elbows coming back and you're getting a bit more upper back engagement instead of really isolating and targeting those lats and it's because of one simple movement that you're skipping. Once you get into the stretched position you still have to kind of retract and, and um, retract and pull your scapula down like this in order to re-engage your back so your biceps don't take over the movement and it's that it's one simple thing guys look from here to here and then pull. And you can see there's a lot more back engagement happening even as I come up from the bottom position. So retract and then pull. Go to the top, retract and then pull. And if you guys look from the side angle over here you can clearly see a difference if I don't retract first. So I'm up in the stretched portion of the movement and if I pull down, I'm almost pulling more towards my chin and my elbows are coming behind me. Whereas if I compress and pull my scapula down first and retract and then bring it down, my elbows are more in line with my hips and I'm able to bring the barbell down to the bottom portion of my chest. So it's a big difference and it's that big difference that's going to make all the difference when it comes to being able to engage your back in your back workouts. And the same thing goes for reverse pull down as well. The last thing you want to do is turn the reverse pull down into a bicep exercise or a weird looking bicep curl. But unfortunately that's what happens if you don't know how to get back into the position of retracting your scapula and pulling your shoulders down. So you might want to come up like this to get that nice deep stretch at the top of the movement. But before you bring the weights back down, you need to re first retract and then pull. So if you have a hard time with this guys, it might even be worth going a bit lighter on the weight and then focusing on this being two movements where you retract and then pull on every single repetition and as you get better at it, you'll be able to do it in one solid smooth motion like this. It just takes time. Once you build that mind-muscle connection and you have full control, you'll be able to do it no problem. And the same thing goes for pull-ups. Pull-ups obviously is much easier to sit in the stretched position because it's literally the bottom of the movement where most of us get stuck. But once you're here, you first need to be able to retract by pulling like this and then coming up. And that's how you really engage your back and try to take your biceps 
out of the movement as much as possible. So retract and then pull. Obviously, we're still working our biceps, but if we don't do this little bit of retraction here, we're not going to hit our lats as hard as we want to. And obviously, the same thing goes for chin-ups. And then over here, guys, if we're doing like a T-bar row or any kind of row, and to be honest with you, this is probably the easiest exercise to teach your body this movement. Once you get into position, what you want to do, get your shoulders neutral like this, come forward to get a nice stretch, and then pull back first like this. So this is the movement from here to here, and then once you're here, then you pull in. And something you'll notice happen is that you actually pull this, uh, this T-bar closer to your belly button when you retract your shoulders first. A lot of times if you don't retract your shoulders, you end up pulling it higher like this and getting more upper back engagement. If your goal is to hit your upper back, then that's fine. But if you're really trying to smash your lats, you want to retract and then pull. So start it off as doing two separate movements to where you retract and then pull your arms back. And then as you get better and better with it, you'll be able to make it one movement and hit your back as hard as possible. And then just because I have it available to me, I want to show you one more exercise, and it's the barbell bent over row. And remember, guys, when doing a barbell bent over row, if we're using an overhand grip, we're hitting more posterior deltoids um, and upper back. When we do the movement, if we use an underhand grip, we're actually getting a lot more lat engagement. So, with that being said, on this exercise, if I hold it like this, and I'm trying to hit my lats, if I don't do any kind of retraction, I'm going to bring it up a bit higher like this, okay? And I'm still going to be hitting a bit more upper back, even though I have it underhand grip. But if you get that nice deep stretch, and then retract first, and then pull, see how it brings it right to my belly button? That's going to maximize your back engagement, your lat engagement, when doing this exercise. So retract, pull, retract, pull. So to wrap this up, when it comes to training your back, Obviously, biceps are a secondary mover, but we have bicep workouts to train biceps. If we're doing a back workout, we want to make sure that we're hitting our back as hot as possible. And if lats are a lagging area for you, it's probably because you're making this simple mistake and it's as, it's as easy to correct it as I just showed you on all these different exercises. So be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.